All right, so our previous uh, video ended with the question, why does the addition of the hydroxyl group turn an otherwise hydrophobic molecule into a water-soluble molecule, one that is hydrophilic? And the reason why is because that, uh, that hydroxyl group changes the polarity of the molecule. It takes this molecule, which is otherwise nonpolar, we have an equal distribution of electrons all the way around this molecule, and we suddenly attach this polar, uh, this polar group. This electronegative group is going to, uh, all the electrons are going to gravitate towards this hydroxyl group, which is going to create a partial charge. This side of ethanol is partially negative. This side of ethanol is going to be partially positive. Once we have a polar molecule, we are suddenly going to be very soluble in water, which is also a polar molecule. Cells are going to be 70 to 90% water. The ability for a molecule to be soluble in water drastically affects its ability to be transported throughout the body and um, it changes its reactivity even within the cell. Whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar drastically affects how it um, reacts in the body. So this is actually where a, a, a big important role in developing pharmaceuticals. We need molecules that are going to be polar or nonpolar depending on what effects we want them to have within the body. So these functional groups, hugely important, hugely important in changing the, um, the structure and the functionality of our hydrocarbons. One more thing I want to mention about um, the carbon based or the hydrocarbons is that um, is the mention of isomers. In this figure, we have two organic molecules that have the exact same molecular formula. Both of these have three carbons, th uh, six oxygens, and three, or uh, six hydrogens and three oxygens. However, they have drastically different chemical properties and reactivities. And the carbon backbone is what allows for this uh, diversity and complexity in the structure of different organic molecules. They have the exact same molecular formula, but their shape is different. They are shaped differently. They have completely different functions, completely different reactivities, because the arrangement of those atoms is different. So an isomer is just going to be organic molecules that have identical molecular formulas, but different arrangements, and thus different functionalities. And so by changing not only the functional groups that are attached to a molecule, but by also changing the arrangement of those functional groups, the arrangement of those atoms, we can drastically change um, the reactivity of a particular molecule. All right, so our next unit is going to be going into the biomolecules of cells the biomolecules of cells. And we're going to break those categories out into carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Most of the biomolecules that we are familiar with, these four categories, are going to be what are known as macromolecules. Macromolecules contain much smaller subunits joined together. You can think of it as like a train. A train is not a train unless it's all of those little individual cars strung together to form a, chain, a train. Um, carbohydrates are going to work the same way. Um, we have the individual units and then we've got the, the unit as a whole. Um, so these macromolecules usually consist of many repeating units. Each individual unit is known as a monomer. A molecule composed of many monomer units strung together is what's known as a polymer. Mono meaning one, polymer meaning many. So um, the individual subunit will be the monomer, the one-mer, <laughs> and the, uh, the collective of all of those monomers strung together is going to be what's known as a polymer, poly meaning many. Um, so just for an example of this, DNA is a polymer that consists of several monomeric uh, nucleotides all bound together to form that great big long chain of DNA. The exception to this rule when we're talking about biomolecules is going to be lipids. Lipids are not actually considered um, polymers. 
Uh, they are macromolecules made up of smaller units. The smaller units are glycerol and fatty acids. The larger unit as a whole is what's known as fat. But they're not technically monomers because they are made up of two different types of subunits, um, glycerols and fatty acids, and they're not typically one great big long chain. Um, polymers can vary in length, but they're still built through a very simple process that involves the linking and joining of monomer subunits together to form a polymer. So whether our final train is going to be a carbohydrate like starch or the final train that we are building is going to be DNA, whether we are stringing, um, it does not matter. We are going to build our train in the exact same way every time. And we're going to do this, we're going to do this through synthesis and, and degradation reactions. And we're going to start off um, by building up. So we're going to talk first how to build up these large polymers out of a single or out of individual monomer subunits. So in order to build or synthesize a macromolecule, we have to use a dehydration reaction. And the reason that we call it a dehydration reaction is because it involves the removal of an H group and an OH group in order to join those two subunits together. So what we have is when we are linking these up together, we're going to kick off a hydrogen and we're going to kick off a hydroxide. And when we have H plus OH, we end up with two H's and an O. In other words, H2O. So we are going to form a dehydration reaction by creating a water molecule. And I know this sounds like a lot of words. I'm giving you a chance to write everything down and then we're going to go through lots of drawings and examples of this next. So the synthesis of those biomolecules is going to lead to the formation of water molecules. If we want to then, so this is going to be connecting monomers to make polymers. A great example of this would be formation of starch from glucose mon monomers. We are going to form starch by taking individual bits of glucose using a dehydration reaction to string them all together. A dehydration reaction is what builds them up. So it's a chemical reaction in which those subunit units are joined together, and we're going to make our polymers out of monomers. If we instead want to break that monomer or that polymer back down into individual monomers, we're going to do this by using a hydrolysis reaction. If we had to dehydrate to bring things together, if we had to remove water to bring it together, we're going to add water to separate it. We're going to do a hydrolysis reaction. So a hydrolysis reaction is when we add a water molecule to break up a covalent bond. Um, we use this to break down polymers into monomers. A great example of this would be the digestion of starch into glucose monomers. Now, a lot of students get dehydration and hydrolysis mixed up or confused. So if it helps you at all, um, the way I like to think of it is that is glue. I like to think of these reactions as by using glue. If I want to glue two things together, I apply the glue and I let it dry. So I get remove the water. I let that water evaporate off. I dehydrate that glue. That's what makes it sticky. If I want to get that glue off again, I do that by adding water. So if I've got glue stuck to my hands and I don't like it, or if I've stuck my fingers together with glue, I can rehydrate that glue and use hydrolysis, adding water to split it apart. So personally, when I'm trying to think of, you know, dehydration brings it together or breaks it apart, a lot of people think uh, dehydration is the degradation reaction and hydrolysis is the synthesis, but it's the opposite. When we remove water, we're bringing things together. Uh, we're sticking them together. When we are adding water, we're breaking them apart. And like I said, we're about to go through that in great detail. So to break down a biomolecule, the cell is going to use, um, is going to use a, 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 a dehydration reaction. What we're going to do is what we have right here is we have a string of monomers and we want to attach this side of the chain to this side of the chain. On this side, we have an OH group and an H group over here. So during this process, we are going to add, or we're, I'm sorry, we're going to remove a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen group, and we're going to form water. When we strip these off, when we break these covalent bonds and strip them off, those two monomers are going to form together. And so we have a great big long chain. We used to have two 
individual chains. Now we're going to undergo a dehydration reaction and we're going to string them together. So this is going to be a synthesis reaction. Synthesis to build, building up. We are synthesizing a polymer out of the individual monomer subunits. Now, if we want to break this down, if we want to undergo a degradation reaction, we just have to do the opposite. We're going to start with one great big long chain. We're going to shoot water molecules at it. And when we shoot water molecules at it, we're going to break it apart. We're going to add a hydroxyl group to one side, a hydrogen group to the other side. And where we once had one long chain, we now have two smaller chains. And that's how we break these covalent bonds by adding water to it. So here is an overall summary slide. Um, take some time to go through this slide or this diagram in your textbook. Make sure you really understand synthesis and degradation reactions, understand um, where this comes in, just because we are going to come back to this over and over again when we start talking about enzymes and we're talking about um, different metabolic reactions in the body, we'll come back to these dehydration and hydrolysis reactions. So just make sure you're pretty comfortable with this um, before we move on. The one last thing that I want to say about this formation of these biomolecules, the synthesis and degradation, is that these are non-spontaneous reactions. These reactions don't really just occur all the time. We actually need um, enzymes in order to drive these reactions forward. And an enzyme is going to be a molecule that just speeds up a chemical reaction. Uh, enzymes are pretty unique. They are not consumed by the reaction. They are not changed by the reaction. They are simply catalysts. They're going to help drive that reaction forward. Um, so, and, and we will spend a lot of time, we have a whole chapter devoted to enzymes. I'm just letting you, giving you a little taste in introduction to enzymes and what their role is. Enzymes job is to speed up that synthesis and degradation reaction or otherwise it would occur way too slowly for life to exist. So we need enzymes to speed up these reactions to practical speeds. All right, so that's it for our discussion on the carbon atom and um, organic molecules as a whole. The next couple of sections, we're going to be breaking down those individual um, biomolecules and talking about each of those categories individually.